Hi everybody, how are you? It's Dr. Emily from the Evidence-Based Fitness Academy. Welcome from Singapore. I wanted to shoot a quick video and talk about the second MPJ and give you a few assessment techniques to help you better understand the function of your client's MPJ. Now why understanding the MPJ is important is that we often shift a lot of our focus to the first MPJ. It's a larger joint, so we think that that's where a majority of our forces are going through. However, your second MPJ happens to be associated with the midline of the foot. Now the midline of your foot is your second metatarsal with more of it focused on that second metatarsal head or the second MPJ. Now why that's important to understand has to do with the way that your body transfers forces. When we walk and we strike the ground, you have one times your body weight coming in through your heel as energy. However, when we push off, you actually release two times your body weight and energy through the front of your foot with a majority of those forces being centered over the midline of your foot which means two times your body weight in force is being centered over your second mpj or your second metatarsal head this makes your second mpj joint susceptible to increased stress dysfunction instability and of course pathology so understanding these forces very important also understanding how your mpj is stabilized is very important because that will help you understand why and where your client is experiencing pain so now the primary stabilizing structure when it comes to your MPJs is called the plantar plate. If you've never heard of the plantar plate, you could think of this as a ligament. So it's a ligament on the plantar aspect of your MPJ. It's actually going to insert onto the base of your proximal phalanx. So if we can see in that top picture, it's running from the head of the metatarsal to the base of the proximal phalanx. Now this is the primary stabilizing structure of your MPJs. What it does is it has a plantar flexor force that helps to keep, keep the digit in contact with the ground. Your plantar plate actually has to, happens to be a continuation off of your plantar fascia. So it's a slip that goes forward into your proximal phalanx. Now, when you start to stress that, perhaps you wear high heels. Perhaps you have a Morton's toe, which means that your second metatarsal is longer or is excessively longer than your first, right? So when we have that long digit, which is called a Morton's toe, you are at increased risk of contracting that digit, which means now you have retrograde forces, which are being centered over that second MPJ. You add heels to that, you have the flexion, you perhaps do, do, do certain movements and sports that put a lot of extra forces on that second MPJ. What happens is you start to create instability around that ligament. Now when you start to create instability and inflammation, you increase your risk of micro tearing it, partially tearing it, or in some cases, a complete tear. So if we go back to this picture, you can see where that plantar plate is torn on that bottom image. As soon as you tear that plantar plate, you've lost that primary stabilizing force of that lesser digit. So the assessments and the presentation of how this classically will present so that you can understand that in your patients is first, you want to look to see if they have a digit that's floating. If that digit is lifted and they've lost purchase, which means that when they stand, their toe doesn't touch the ground anymore, that would be a uh, signal or a symptom that is presenting of plantar plate tear, second MPJ dysfunction. Another test that you may see or symptom is that they get a peace finger sign. That means that when they're standing, you're going to see a space between the second and third digit. Again, that's referred to as a peace finger sign, and that's starting to show that they are losing transverse plane stability from that most likely partial tear of their plantar plate. Another assessment that you can do would be to see if that digit is lifting. There's actually a drawer test that you can do. And if you grab the proximal phalanx and you lift it up, sometimes in cases where they have a large tear or complete tear, you can actually re-dislocate it dorsally over that metatarsal head. So again, real quick, some of the presentation that you would see would be a loss of purchase. So the digit is starting to float up. It's not in contact with the ground. Peace finger sign, 
you can actually lift the digit, that would be your drawer sign. Oftentimes they'll have a Morton's toe. Oftentimes they'll have a hammer toe that's also associated with it. They will have pain in the plantar aspect of that MPJ. They often have it on the lateral aspect of that plantar plate. And sometimes it can radiate interdigitally. So oftentimes um, it'll be misdiagnosed as a neuroma, but it's actually a plantar plate tear. Sometimes they'll have a callus underneath the second metatarsal head. All of these things are pushing you in that direction of a plantar plate tear or a second MPJ dysfunction. Why this is important is we want to remember that that's where a majority of your forces are being transferred. If this is the case in your patient and they're having pain, so they're having difficulty doing certain exercises or doing certain movements, you do wanna have them assessed by a podiatrist. You also may want to consider taping the digits. So you tape two and three together and then you want to pull them down. So you actually need to tape them down and together so that you are creating some sort of stability. They may need some sort of U-pad or offloading. And in cases where it is more progressed and they have had MRI ultrasound showing that there may be or there is in fact a partial tear or a complete tear, that may need surgery. However, in my patients who have partial tears, I've started doing amniotic, uh, stem cell is a loose word for it, but an amniotic injection and have had very good results. So again, even though we think of this, the first MPJ as the primary MPJ of the foot, I want you to understand the importance of the second MPJ and why that joint is uniquely at risk of dysfunction and instability. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed and remember, stay barefoot strong.